a hide reinforced to withstand plasma blasts, spine-tipped sacks of venom capable of completely paralyzing prey, six limbs terminating in razor-sharp claws, and muscle fibers that generate enough force to lift 3,000 times its own weight. It's the galaxy's perfect biological weapon. Some know him as Experiment 626, others as yet another failed project of mad scientist Dr. Jumba Jukiba. But on a remote island on some version of Earth, he's known simply as Stitch. I am Dr. Felix Nebula and welcome aboard the living bioship Manta. We just so happen to have intercepted classified data about this genetic anomaly that apparently in this dimension has the Galactic Federation quite concerned. Today, we'll take this opportunity to analyze the deceptively cute biology that makes this creature possible. I suggest caution, Doctor. This creature has been known to be territorial. Relax, Manta. As long as we don't steal his coconut cake, I think we'll be fine. Descending into Earth's atmosphere now, approaching the Hawaiian Excellent. archipelago. Excellent. Thank you, Manta. Now, unlike many species we've studied, dear traveler, we're not seeking out the creature's native habitat for study. In fact, Stitch, as he's known, is not a member of any species. Rather, he is a novel individual entirely the product of genetic engineering. Manta, what other information do we have? Stitch is the 626th experiment illegally conducted by one Dr. Jumba Jukiba on the planet Quelt Kwan. Long-range scans indicate that 626 contains DNA from at least six different alien predator species, each presumably selected for specific advantageous traits. Precisely. Though not exactly ethical, Dr. Jukiba is an undeniable genius. While Earth scientists were carefully splicing single genes to create glowing fish or pest-resistant crops, Jumba appears to have engineered an entire genome from scratch, combining traits that would naturally repel each other. But perhaps I should be more charitable to the scientists of this dimension. After all, their modern genetic engineering runs into several fundamental biological limitations, and modifying one gene triggers cascading effects throughout the organism. Creating a muscle protein that generates extreme force requires a skeleton that can withstand those forces, for example, while making skin dense enough to resist damage typically sacrifices flexibility. Such are the biological constraints that even advanced CRISPR technology cannot overcome. Yet Jumba solved these paradoxes. He created a being capable of lifting several thousand times its body weight without structural failure. An organism that maintains both incredible density and normal flexibility. A creature with a brain the size of a grapefruit that outperforms supercomputers. And, by the way, all of this destructive potential fits inside a compact frame that appears harmless enough to be mistaken for a dog. Specimen has been located and additional long-range scans completed. Shall we analyze? I thought you'd never ask. Now, although Stitch can pass for an albeit unusual dog, that is not his true form. What we see here is the creature's natural design, if you can call it that. The most obvious departure from the traditional mammalian body plan of Earth is, of course, the presence of an additional set of limbs. Indeed, Experiment 626 is a hexapodal vertebrate, which on Earth is a contradiction in terms. An oxymoron? Actually, he's quite intelligent, but we'll get to that shortly. Anyway, as we've seen, Stitch can modify his morphology to imitate the familiar tetrapodal design. So where do these extra limbs go? Well, as it turns out, the two medial limbs actually retract against the torso via a sophisticated switchblade mechanism, quite unlike anything in Earth biology. This is possible because though his primary arms connect at the shoulder like a typical vertebrate, the second set attaches lower on the body at the lumbar region of the spine. When extended, these arms provide additional points of contact, allowing Stitch to climb with unparalleled efficiency or to manipulate multiple objects simultaneously. When retracted, they tuck away so effectively that the casual observer would never suspect their existence. Fascinating! How does this retraction mechanism function? Well, first, the shoulder blade of the secondary arm literally folds up against the body when not in use, creating a compact profile wherein the entire limb can be housed. Second, the lower arm slides along a groove in this folded structure, 
operating precisely like a switchblade knife. This process is controlled by two distinct muscle groups. As documented in Jumba's notes, which we've acquired at great expense, these muscle sets alternate between tensing and releasing in perfect synchronization. When the extension muscles contract, they unfold the shoulder blade and slide the arm outward along the groove. When the retraction muscles activate, they pull the arm back and fold the supporting structure flat against the body. From the exterior and especially at a distance, one can observe no visible seam or bulge indicating the presence of hidden limbs. The musculature interlocks with incredible precision. From a neurological perspective, controlling six independent limbs is quite a challenge. We see in tangentially analogous cephalopods like octopuses a kind of distributed neural control, with ganglia in each arm handling local movement while the central brain coordinates higher functions. Neural scans of 626 instead indicate specialized brain regions dedicated exclusively to the secondary arms, with dedicated motor cortex tissue that activates only when these limbs are deployed. When retracted, these neural pathways go dormant, which conserves both energy and processing power. And when all six limbs work together, Stitch is capable of remarkable feats of locomotion and manipulation. He can scale vertical surfaces by using his secondary arms as additional anchor points. He can operate complex machinery with complete efficiency. He can also attack from unexpected angles while defending from multiple directions. Really what we're seeing here is genetic engineering at its finest. What about those antennae that occasionally appear on his head? Are they purely decorative? Far from it. Like his extra arms, Stitch's retractable antennae are another specialized adaptation with astounding functionality. According to Jumba's technical specifications, these antennae serve as communication devices that operate on multiple frequencies. They can both receive and transmit microwave radio energy, something like a biological transceiver, and they most commonly operate in 2.5 gigahertz, identical to a microwave oven. This explains Stitch's ability to intercept and interpret various communication signals and even to function as a living audio amplifier under certain conditions. As you might have guessed, the antennae connect directly to specialized neural pathways in Stitch's brain, allowing him to process electromagnetic data as seamlessly as auditory information. This gives him an additional sensory dimension beyond the traditional five senses. He's able to perceive parts of the electromagnetic spectrum invisible to most beings, at least when the antennae are extended. When not needed, they retract into specialized sheaths in his cranium, completely disappearing beneath his fur. Like his arms, this retraction system uses dedicated muscle groups and neural controls. While undoubtedly designed as a tactical advantage for a weapon of destruction, like many of his adaptations, Stitch has found more constructive uses for this ability than Jumba ever intended. Do we have an insight as to why these experiments were conducted in the first place? Surprisingly, sort of. Experiment 626 is the culmination of Dr. Jukiba's lifelong pursuit, creating the perfect biological weapon. While the Galactic Federation considered genetic experimentation illegal, Jumba paid no mind, continuing to refine his techniques through hundreds of trials. Each previous experiment, from the sandwich-making experiment 625 to the weather-controlling experiment 619, tested specific traits that would eventually be perfected in Stitch. The singular purpose was the same throughout. An organism optimized for destruction, capable of dismantling entire planetary infrastructures. What makes Stitch uniquely effective among Jumba's creations is his unprecedented physical power concentrated in a deceptively small package. The foundation of these strengths lie, interestingly enough, in the composition of his muscles. According to Jumba's notes, Stitch's muscle fibers contain excessively compressed myofibrils, the contractile elements that generate force in all muscle cells. Whereas a typical organism might pack thousands of myofibrils per muscle fiber, Stitches contain millions, arranged in a hexagonal lattice formation. This microscopic engineering enables Stitch to lift objects 3,000 times his own weight. For a perspective, if a human possessed similar strength, they could lift multiple fully loaded commercial aircraft simultaneously. But how can 626's relatively tiny frame withstand such forces without complete structural failure? An excellent question. The answer appears to be found in a number of cascading adaptations. First, Stitch's skeletal structure exhibits a carbon-reinforced calcium matrix about 10 times denser than mammalian bone. This provides the internal framework necessary to anchor his hyper-powerful muscles. 
Meanwhile, his tendons and ligaments contain molecularly cross-linked protein chains that resist tearing under extreme tension. But even with these reinforcements, conventional biology would still collapse under such forces. This brings us to perhaps Stitch's most unusual anatomical feature, an internal composition of approximately 62.7% snutium-like mucus. What? I know that might sound strange, and that's because it is. Snutonium is a very rare and naturally occurring energy source that doesn't exist on Earth at all. And the mucus permeating Stitch's tissues shares a remarkably similar chemical signature. Analysis indicates that this substance functions as a sophisticated non-Newtonian fluid matrix, behaving like a liquid during normal movement, allowing flexibility, but instantly hardening under impact. When Stitch exerts maximum strength or receives a powerful blow, this matrix uniformly distributes the resulting stress throughout his body rather than concentrating it at weak points. Essentially, Stitch is a self-reinforcing hydraulic system. That's pretty cool, but there's a significant trade-off. Very high density. In fact, Stitch's molecular density exceeds that of water by a considerable margin, which explains why he sinks immediately in aquatic environments. This vulnerability nearly proved fatal during his initial capture, which just goes to show that even Jumba's most advanced creation has certain limitations. I have a question. What's going on with those dorsal spines? Great observation. Right in line with the theme of biological destruction, these spines connect directly to specialized venom sacs embedded within 626's spinal column, each of which contain a potent paralytic compound. The venom itself appears to be a kind of neurotoxin that causes temporary motor paralysis in most species, though fortunately without permanent damage. When not needed, these spines retract completely into specialized sheaths along the spine, becoming virtually undetectable beneath his fur. And given the fact that 626 was designed to cause destruction throughout the galaxy, he possesses several even more interesting and perhaps somewhat unexpected abilities. As previously mentioned, Stitch is an excellent climber. Scans reveal that this is partly due to the fact that his paws contain millions of microscopic CT, hair-like structures that create van der Waals forces between his paws and virtually any surface. Manta, could you give me a definition of van der Waal force? Van der Waals forces are weak electrical attractions between molecules that occur when temporary fluctuations in electron distribution create brief, positive, and negative charges. Right, so when electron clouds of different surfaces interact, they create weak but numerous attraction points. And it appears that Stitch possesses approximately 100 times more Cite than a gecko, which allows him to support his considerable weight even when hanging upside down from smooth surfaces like glass or metal. Fascinating engineering. But what about his intelligence? A creature with such physical capabilities must have significant cognitive limitations. I'm glad you brought that up. In fact, contrary to your earlier thought, Stitch is no moron. You see, Stitch possesses what Jumba proudly termed supercomputer intelligence, housed within a brain approximately the size of a mandarin orange. Scans of the neural circuitry reveal unprecedented neuronal density, approximately 100 billion packed into a space one-eighth the volume of a human brain. And it should come as no surprise by now that much of this creature's intelligence is devoted to, well, destruction. It appears that Jumba embedded some kind of elaborate behavioral algorithm throughout Stitch's limbic network and frontal cortex, essentially programming him for chaos. These neural pathways appear to have been designed to trigger the release of dopamine exclusively when engaging in destructive activities. It sounds like a biological reward system for mayhem. Exactly. And yet, this neural complexity came with an unexpected vulnerability. After Stitch's creation, Jumba was apparently arrested before he could fully charge Stitch's molecules in a fusion chamber. What does that mean? Great question, and for now at least, the idea of charging molecules will remain a mystery known only to Jumba himself. If I had to guess, it probably involves a final stabilization process in order to align the experiment's quantum molecular structure, an interruption to which would leave its neural pathways unstable at the quantum level. But that's just a guess. In any case, this incomplete molecular charging led to what became known as Stitch's glitch. Periodic neurological malfunctions during which his brain would revert to its original destructive programming before eventually shutting down completely. Now, apparently, during these glitch episodes, Stitch would experience seizure-like symptoms as neural pathways misfired. 
temporarily overriding his developed personality and returning him to his factory setting, so to speak. Amazingly, however, this glitch was eventually resolved, not through technological intervention, but through emotional connection. Perhaps Stitch's brain developed capabilities beyond even Jumba's understanding. So, the most dangerous aspect of Experiment 626 wasn't his strength or destructive capability. Precisely. It was his capacity to choose his programming. In fact, I would say that the biggest takeaway from our expedition isn't the brilliance of Jumba's design, but how biology managed to transcend it. Even in the most meticulously engineered system, life always finds ways to adapt. Fascinating. Perhaps we should recruit him. Drat, it appears that our crew roster is full. Maybe next time. For now, dear traveler, feel free to take a brief respite. When you're ready, you can choose our next adventure on the screen in front of you. Until next time. Brace yourselves. Beginning ascent in three, two, one.